The U.S. border reopened to U.K. travelers at 5, 1 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time on Tuesday morning, meaning royal family members based in Britain can finally fly out to visit the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, and the two children. The border had been closed to all but a narrow group of travelers bound for the States from the U.K. for almost two years. The COVID-19 imposed travel ban had stopped members of the royal family from visiting the Sussexes in their Montecito home, but with the border open, this may offer opportunities for reconciliation across the pond. An insider told Heat well, they haven't had a single royal visitor since moving to America, which they know is mainly because of COVID. But now that travel restrictions between the US and the UK have been lifted, they want that to change. Prince Harry, who will on Wednesday be the guest of honor at a military gala in New York, returned to the UK in July for the unveiling of a bronze statue in tribute to his mother, the late Princess Diana. The trips to and from the Sussex's California home, which they moved to following their split from the royal family just as the global COVID-19 pandemic started, have been few and far between. This has meant Archie, two, and five-month-old baby Lilibet haven't had the opportunity to get to know their royal cousins and family in the UK. There has been a considerable distance between the royal family and the Duke and Duchess of Sussex since they surrendered their duties as working royals. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex appeared at their final royal engagement in their previous capacity at the start of March 2020. In February this year, Meghan and Harry confirmed to the Queen that the split was final, and the process of stripping the couple of their final tethers to the firm began. The couple's statement at the time said, as evidenced by their work over the past year, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex remain committed to their duty and service to the UK and around the world, and have offered their continued support to the organisations they have represented regardless of official role. We can all live a life of service. Service is universal. A Buckingham Palace statement said the royal family were saddened by their decision, but did not change that the Duke and Duchess remain much-loved members of the family. They had already lost their entitlement to go by HRH, but maintained the right to call themselves the Duke and Duchess of Sussex. The following month, Meghan and Harry's much-anticipated interview with US chat show host Oprah Winfrey was aired, which signified to many commentators the size of the gap which had opened up between the firm and the Sussexes. The incendiary interview had the royal household and viewers on the edge of their seats as they got a glimpse into the Sussexes' account of their time as working royals. Harry opened up on the perceived gulf between himself and his father, Prince Charles, 72, and also touched on the distance between him and his brother, Prince William, with whom his relationship is reported to be strained. During the interview, Harry and Meghan also made the seismic claim they had faced racism from a senior royal who asked Harry about the color of his unborn child's skin while Meghan was pregnant with their son Archie. Prince William, 39, reacted to these claims in the days after the Oprah interview by saying the royals were very much not a racist family.